Hello students, in this video we'll discuss computing limits of functions of several variables. Given a function z equals f of x, y, we say that the limit as x, y approaches a, b of f of x, y exists if for any curve gamma of t with gamma of 0 being a, b, the limit as t goes to 0 of f of gamma of t is equal to L. So what this means is if I pick a point, here's my x-axis, my y-axis, if I pick a point a, b in space, and I have some function, then I need to look at every single possible curve that approaches that point, of which there are infinitely many, and if on all of those curves, the limit, as we get closer and closer to that point, gives me the same value, then the limit will exist. So an analogy within Calc 1, in Calc 1, if you had a point, the x-axis, and you had x equals a, there's only two ways you can get to a. You can get to a from the right, or you can get to a from the left. So you need the right limit and the left limit being equal for the limit to exist for a function of one variable. If you have a function of two variables, there's lots of different paths for you to get to a, b. For any such path, the limit has to be the same for the limit to exist. So it's very difficult for functions of several variables to have a limit that exists because it has to agree on every single curve. Let's see an example of where a function would not have a limit. So here's an example. Let's show the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0 of x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared does not exist. So what we'll do is we'll look at two different ways to get to the origin. Here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. The first way I'll get to the origin, to the zero, zero, is I'll move along the x-axis. So this curve over here, I'll call that curve number one. Curve number one would be t comma zero for t between zero and one. That would move me from the point zero, zero to the point one, zero. But we can think of this as going backwards in time as well. If we compute this limit along this trajectory, we have the limit as t goes to 0, and now x gets replaced with t and y gets replaced with 0. So I'm going to have a t squared minus 0 squared over t squared plus 0 squared, and that will just simplify to 1. So the limit along this first, along the x-axis, will be equal to 1. If we look along the limit along the y-axis, what will we have? Along the y-axis, we'll call this curve number 2. This will be the curve 0, t, same range of t, t between 0 and 1. Along that trajectory, we have the limit as t goes to 0 of 0 squared minus t squared over 0 squared plus t squared. That will simplify to negative 1. So for this function, the limit along the y-axis is negative 1, and the limit along the x-axis going to 0, 0 is positive 1. Those are not the same values. Those numbers are not equal, so the limit does not exist. Let's look at another example of this, where we might have some things being equal on the x-axis. If I look at the limit as x, y tends to 0, 0 of 1 minus the cosine of x plus y over x squared plus y squared, then let's see what happens. So if we look at this, if I look at the limit on the x-axis, if we look at on the x-axis, we'll have the curve t comma 0. And so let's figure out what that is. That's the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 minus the cosine of x is now equal to t over t over x is t. So I'm going to have a t squared. And so what happens over here is I'm going to have a 0 over 0. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if I use L'Hopital's rule, this will be the limit as t goes to 0 of sine t over 2t. And we see that this limit is equal to 1 half. Now, we can look at the limit along the 
y-axis. Along the y-axis, we'll see we'll get exactly the same, same expression along the y-axis. We have 0 comma t. And we'll see it's exactly the same as this limit over here. So along the y-axis, we also go to 1 half. Now, if we look at both, However, if we look along the line x equals y, along this third trajectory where x is equal to y, and what would that look like on our graph? That would correspond to what? That would correspond to, here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. It would be this line over here, where y is equal to x. You would have the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 minus the cosine of 2t over, then we'll have a 2t squared. And so what this will be is this is going to be the limit as t goes to 0. We can use L'Hopital's rule again. And we'll get what? We will have, we will have a negative 2, positive 2 sine 2t two over a 4t. And so this will be the limit. This is equal to the limit as t goes to 0 of sine of 2t over 2t. And now this limit, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as t goes to 0 of 2 cosine 2t over 2. And we see that this limit is equal to 1. So along the x-axis and the y-axis, the limit is equal to 1 half and 1 half. But along the line y equals x, the limit is equal to 1. So I have distinct limits, so this limit does not exist as well. So this limit over here does not exist. And so we can see oftentimes when computing these limits, we're trying to show a limit doesn't exist. We look along, going to the origin for example, we look along the x-axis, the y-axis, the line y equals x, any line that goes to the origin, different types of parabolas. There's many different curves to test, but usually if you try either a parabola, a square root curve, a straight line, or the axes, you can show that the limit doesn't exist. Thank you very much.